Hi everyone, I'm Andrew from Thingsport. In this video tutorial we are going to cover basic operations with device attributes. If you are new to Thingsport platform, I recommend you to review the getting started video first. You can find it on our YouTube channel and in the video description. Today we will overview device attributes feature. This is one of the main Thingsport features that is actively used for device management. We will explain the difference between various device attributes and how they can be used to implement most common IoT use cases. Then we will proceed to hands-on part where we will demonstrate simple JavaScript application. This application reports device metadata and host operation system statistics. This application receives notifications about firmware updates and you are also able to control frequency of statistics upload using Thingsport. We are going to use live demo server in this tutorial. However, you can use your own installation. Let's start from the device attributes overview. Device attributes are key value pairs that can be associated with the device. You are able to use these attributes inside data visualization widgets inside IoT rule engine and other Thingsport features. Device applications may invoke attributes API using MQTT, Coop, and HTTP. Server-side applications may use REST or WebSocket API to interact with attributes. So there are three types of device attributes supported by Thingsport. This is client-side, shared, and server-side attributes. Let's review them one by one with use cases and examples. We will start from client-side attributes. Client-side attributes are reported by device applications to the server. Server-side applications may fetch latest values of these attributes or simply subscribe to attribute updates. They may be used to upload and store semi-static or static data associated with the device. If you want to upload data that changes frequently, you should consider telemetry feature. Telemetry feature is optimized for high frequency of data upload and it is also optimized for storage and processing. As an example of client-side attributes, we can use firmware version and serial number. The serial number is definitely static attribute. The firmware version is semi-static attribute that can change uh, oftenly. Device applications can both report and fetch data of the client-side attributes. This may be useful for some primitive devices that do not have local storage. They can report the application state and then fetch after next startup. Let's now proceed to review the shared device attributes. Shared attributes are managed by server-side applications and they are accessible by the device applications. For example, server-side script may use subscription plan or account type attribute for the set-top box device. Device and other server-side applications can subscribe to changes of these attributes and react. For example, set-top box application may change the behavior when the account type or subscription plan is updated. In this and other cases, Thingsports acts as a middleware that is responsible for storage of these attributes and dispatching updates to both client or device side and server side applications. Running Thingsport in a cluster mode will also provide high availability and scalability for this solution. Now let's proceed to review the server side device attributes. Server side attributes are managed by server side applications similar to shared attributes. The only difference is that they are not accessible by device applications. This is useful when you want to associate some data with the device, but you don't want device application to get access to this data. For example, this may be an order number or purchase date or phone number of associated technician. The server-side attributes are available to use in rule engine and in data visualization. You can also subscribe to changes of the server-side attributes by different server-side applications. For example, the attributes card widget automatically receives notifications about attributes updates and etc. Let's move to the hands-on part. 
In this part, we will review sample application that demonstrates Attributes API. The application is very simple and is written in JavaScript. You can easily port it to other programming languages. The application logic is really quite simple. We will push firmware version and serial number as a client-side attributes. We will also generate a random application state and during first assert up, we will push this as a client-side attribute. Then, if the application was restarted, we will fetch this application state from the server. The application also reports operating system stats every 5 seconds. We will be able to reconfigure this application behavior in runtime and will change upload frequency using shared attributes. Finally, we will show that application is able to receive notifications about new firmware version. This is not complete over the air update solution because you still need to fetch and apply firmware update, but it is a good place to start from. So let's review the application code and learn how to use Singsport Attributes API. I will put the link to this code in the video description. First thing to say is that the application uses MQTT library that you should install before launching the app. The app is also communicating with Singsport demo server. You should change this constant if you want to connect to your own server. The access token on line 7 is fetched from the first argument when you launch the application. Also it is first we need to specify 2 instead of 0 here because first and second arguments are not and the application name itself. Next is the list of constants with MQTT topics that we use. As you can see we are going to connect to our server with the access token set as a username. Let's move to the connect callback. We are doing three important API calls here. First is to report the client side attributes firmware version and serial number. This is in line 30. Second is to subscribe to shared attribute updates. This is line 35. We will receive notification about changed attributes if the actual change will happen after processing of subscribe requests on the server. This means that if device was offline for a certain time, it may, may miss the update. To protect our application from such issues, we do need the step on line 38. Basically, on each reconnect, we will request latest state of shared attributes, upload frequency and latest firmware version. We will also request client application state here. Now we can move to the next callback. This callback is invoked when we receive message from server over MQDT. The message itself always arrives with the topic. So first we will filter by topic and apply actions based on this topic. If the topic equals to attributes topic, this indicates attributes update. Next we check presence of attributes and that they are different from the current state. If this is true, we will either reschedule the telemetry upload or print this new message. Now, if the topic corresponds to attributes response, we will apply following logic. First, if application state attributes is present, we will restore the application state. Otherwise, this indicates first run of the application so we will create random state and publish it to the server. Second, we will analyze shared attributes. If they don't match current state, we will reschedule data, upload and print firmware version. Now let's launch the application and see it in action. First thing we need to do is to log in to the demo, live demo server and provision our device. I'm going to do this right now. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm going to check that npm, Node.js and the MQTT library is installed. I'm going to install MQTT library using simple command. Next, I'm going to download the application and launch it using access token from the previous step. Let's clear the console and launch our application. I need to copy paste the access token once again. So as you can see, client is connected and is going to report operating system statistics every 5 seconds. Also, the response to attributes request is completely empty, since there is this first application launch. So the client application have generated the application state and published it to the server. Let's observe it on the device attributes panel. We can also see that telemetry is also reported. Now let's restart our application to demonstrate restore of the application state. As you can see, the state is restored using information from the server. Now let's change the upload frequency. Let's open the device attributes panel and navigate to shared attributes. I am going to copy paste name of the attributes from the script and using plus button will specify this attribute's value. We will use integer attribute in this case and will have it set to one second. As you can see, the attribute change is applied by device application. Now let's simulate new firmware version. I'm going to copy paste the latest firmware version attribute name and set it to 1.0.2. As you can see, the attribute change is applied by device application. So the firmware version notification is also received by device application. Now let's go back to things board and visualize the data on the dashboard. But before, I am going to add one more attribute. We will name it order number and give it a simple value. As you can see, there is no updates on the client side and this attribute's value is invisible. So let's now select our client side attributes and add them to dashboard. We will use attribute card and will create a new dashboard called test device dashboard. Let's mark this checkbox and open the dashboard. We will also need to add shared and server side attributes to the card. I'm going to resize the card and add these attributes values in details. We will select latest firmware version, upload frequency and order number. Let's apply the change. Now we can see all the attributes in the attributes card and we can rename one of the attributes to application state. Now let's add one more widget. This will be a chart widget to show the memory stats. I'm going to rename it to something like, like test device RAM. And add a data source which will be our test device and time series value of memory. Let's save this. Now we can go back to devices 
and update upload frequency. We will see how this impacts both device and the dashboard. Let's select shared attributes, then upload frequency and edit. I will put 2 seconds upload frequency. Let's go back to our dashboard. We can see that attributes card value changed and data is coming less frequently. We also can see this in the command line. Let's summarize what we have achieved. We have learned how to upload static and semi-static information from devices using client-side attributes. Now we also know how to manage device application behavior using shared attributes. Also we have learned how to visualize attributes data using attributes card widget. Now you are able to use this knowledge to build real-time applications using SyncSport. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and Twitter to get notifications about new videos and tutorials. Goodbye.